Hey guys, so today we're going to look at how to create a portfolio page layout using Photoshop. So the first thing you're going to want to do is when you open the new document within the files, you'll want to go to print and then set your measurements to what you need them to be. I'm just going to go ahead and set it to 17 by 11 and then create. So for this specific layout, I'm going to use a background image and I'll use a rendering and then I will show you how you can place floor plans and elevations and blend those into the image so it looks more seamless than if you were to do it in InDesign. Okay, so I already have all my images on my desktop desktop so I'm gonna just press on an image drag it over to the Photoshop and then it'll pop up and then I'm gonna set it and drag it to the background let go and it um, creates that for me so this will automatically place your image as the background and then you can add layers on top of that using this icon at the bottom and place things on top of that. So the next thing I'm going to want to place is a floor plan, but before I do, I'm going to want to bring it into Photoshop and edit it to the way I want it to appear on this uh, rendering. Another thing you can do, which I'll go in more depth about, is edit like brightness, contrast, exposure on this image by pressing this uh, half filled circle and it gives you all of these options to edit. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and bring in my floor plan that I want to use. Now these aren't all from one place, I just kind of picked and dragged. So. I want to use this floor plan. I'm going to hover over the Photoshop icon and then bring it up to the tab. That way it creates its own tab and we can edit it here. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And I did that by pressing Control Plus. And I'm going to start outlining what I want to appear within the rendering and layout we just started. So I'm going to just use my quick selection tool. You can also use your magic wand tool. Um, it's just underneath that. So if you right click on the quick selection tool, it'll pop up the magic wand tool and I'll show you the difference. Uh, the magic wand just automatically selects what it thinks you want. Um, and the Quick selection tool gives you the power to select it yourself and you can also change the size of that quick selection tool. So I'm just going to use that just for me it works a little bit easier but just be careful with the edges because sometimes it'll go over like that. But a way to fix that is on this top ribbon up here, there's a plus and a minus quick selection tool. So if you press on the subtract or minus, you can subtract what you don't want to be highlighted. Like I said, if you need to zoom in, you can. And if you just click and drag, it'll just keep uh, highlighting the areas. That way you don't have to, you know, keep pressing. But sometimes just pressing might uh, be a little bit more accurate. So just kind of play it out. Okay. Now, one of the things you need to make sure after you've selected all of this is that, like I said earlier, 
no outer space is selected, so that's just going to be you selecting your subtract quick selection tool and highlighting the areas which are out of bounds. And if there are little crevices like over here by the door, you can just change the size and that looks about right. So then uh, all you have to do is uh, press control C to copy, go back to your scene, make sure you're in another layer, not on the one where you brought in the rendering. And to paste it, just press control V and it pastes paste it on top of that image. So you can move it around and then you can also change its scale or size by going to edit, transform, and then choosing, you know, whatever you need. I'm just going to choose scale for now. If you press shift and do scale at the same time, you'll be able to distort it. I don't want to do that. I just want to scale it regularly. So. It looks about good for now, so I'm going to just drag it to where I want it to appear. Great, so once we don't need this image anymore, we can just close the tab so it doesn't fill up with unnecessary files. And then I'm going to bring in my elevations that I just found online. I'm going to create another tab. <coughs> I'm going to zoom in to the one I want. Um, I'll just use this one since it's the first one. And I'm just going to do that same thing with the quick selection tool. I'm just going to enlarge it a little bit more and make sure I'm in the addition uh, quick selection tool. So this one's uh, smaller, so it's going to be obviously a little bit easier for you to select it. Um, now, if you want, you can always uh, go in and just select the um, just the black lines and I can show you how to do that. Uh, it's a little bit more tedious, but I can definitely show you a way to do that. Okay, I'm just gonna copy it over. Create a new layer and paste it. <clears throat> and then I'm going to obviously scale this down a little bit. It's a little bit too big. And if you want to zoom in a little bit, it might let you. move a little bit more freely. Okay, so here you go. So I'll go back to this. If you wanted to select just the black lines, um, I'm going to just deselect this. So to deselect, I just um, selected this rectangular marquee tool, right clicked, and then it'll if you have something selected, it will just pop up to say deselect. <clears throat> okay, so to bring in just the black lines, right click on the quick selection tool and select your magic wand tool. Right click anywhere on the image and select color range. And then you're gonna want just the dark lines to appear. So just select as much dark space or black space as you can. Um, this is definitely an option. Sometimes it can just get grainy, so yeah, it just depends what you want to do. Um, yeah, so make sure all of that's selected. Um, I can zoom in a little bit.
Uh, you can press OK. And once you have all of these selected, you can just do Control C. Go back to your rendering with your floor plans and elevations that you already brought in and just press Control V. And then obviously you're gonna wanna scale it down. So this is just another way for you to bring in um, renderings, uh, or I'm sorry, floor plans or elevations if you want it to look a little bit more seamless. So I'll delete that and then I'll go back to this layer. The thing with this, it's really hard to move it because um, the lines are so thin. So after you bring it in, it's a lot harder to move it. So I'm actually going to scale this down just a little bit more so it fits and then I'll show you guys the final step. So once I have this, um, obviously I recommend you guys, you know, using either this type of look or this type of look for your floor plans. Just make it consistent and not, you know, one have the white space inside and one doesn't. Um, but to make something like this to appear better and just for them to blend in more with the rendering, you can uh, create shapes. Um, so first, I'm just going to use a circle, you can use a rectangle, um, or, you know, whatever type of shape you want. Um, I'm going to keep it white, I'm going to move it underneath, and then I'm going to draw another one here, and that one's already going to be underneath. Um, so... I'm gonna close this properties panel. So once you have these, as you can tell, um, the obviously these are appearing a lot better. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and scale this one so um, all of the elevations are showing up. Okay, so. <clears throat> Another thing you can do is uh, to blend it in and not make it look so um, out of place here is um, you can go to one of the uh, circles that you drew. They're called ellipse here. And then create a mask for it, which is this button down here. And then you can select your gradients tool which is here, I believe, yeah. It's with the paint bucket, so you just right click and select the gradient tool. And then you can press once in the middle or wherever you want and drag it out and it'll start creating gradients for you. Um, so I'm actually gonna do it this way. And then you can also change the opacity if you want. And then you can go to your second shape, do the same thing, create a mask, and then start creating gradients. So 
So once you have this, if you still want to blend it in better, you can use your blur tool. Um, and then you can um, adjust the hardness, you can adjust the size, and just start blending. Um, blending these shapes into the image. You can also uh, go back to the gradients tool and select a different type of gradients um, in order to blend it in better with the uh, rendering. And so that's how you can place these um, elevations and plans and blend them in with your uh, image in the background.